I guess you're poor. There you go. We're good. We're good. We're going to sing, we're going to sing happy anniversary to Brandon Kelsey. I don't know how many years. I'd say about eight, nine, ten, something six. like that. Six. Six. Six years. I was close. Amen. <laughs> you said that, but they, they have right. been together for nine years. Uh, They've been you know, together for nine years. They've been together six. for nine years. That's what I said. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Hey, uh, page nine. We got some new faces. Hey.
Listen. One twin. There you go. Page one twenty.
streets of gold and her husband's up there walking on. Yes. That's what this song's about. One glorious day that's, that sky's going to split wide open. Amen. And we can just go on and twinkle in the night. Amen. That's, right. that's yeah. what it's all about. Amen. Do that one in the when heaven is filled with his praises one day when sin was the black as could be Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelt among men my example is he the word became flesh and the light shined upon us his glory
The question is, do you believe? Amen. 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 Do you believe that it's soon and very soon? I believe it yeah. with all of my heart. Amen. Amen. And here's the glory of it all. And we just sung about that glorious day to come. And we'll go to be with Jesus and live in the sweet by and by. But man, Amen. I will walk through the nest of here and now to get there. Right. Yes. Amen. Amen. And when I am so glad, and I praise God so much for it, <laughs> is the strength that he gives me to take every step Amen. through every pothole, Amen. through every pit, Amen. through every bit of darkness, yeah. because he's right there with me. Amen. Amen. When I get too weak to walk, he carries me. Yes, yeah, he does. Amen. When it gets so dark I can't see, he shines his light to show me the way. Amen. His word, his word, his word. It's a lamp unto yes, my feet amen. and a light unto my path. It shows me where I am and yes. where I ought to be going. Amen. amen. Isn't that good? Amen. Lord, the provision that God has made for us all. Amen. amen. I'm going to sing this song and then I'm going to ask Brother Mike Backer to come up and... Uh, uh, break the bread of life to us tonight. Yeah. Give us what God has laid upon his heart. Amen. Have you been in a struggle? Have you been wondering? Have you been doubting? Do you feel bound tonight by sin or circumstance? I want you to understand something. That Jesus breaks chains. Amen. Amen. Jesus breaks Yeah. 
somebody ought to shout for joy. Because chains are falling in this place. Amen. Chains are being broken. Amen. And falling to the ground tonight. Glory. Hallelujah. You ought to just turn loose and let God tonight. Amen. Amen. You ought to just tear down that wall of petition and let God the Holy Spirit move in you. Amen. Move in this place. Don't try to throttle him. Let me tell you, you can't throttle him. Amen. Amen. Don't try to chain him up because he'll break him down. Amen. Amen. Turn him loose in Jesus' name. Amen. Give him praise and glory in his house. He's worthy. Amen. Amen. You come and share with God and lay on your heart, brother. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Let's go to his holy name. Amen. I'll tell you what, I guess we've had church early. We can go home. Amen. That's <laughs> what <laughs> made my job easy. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's for sure. Bless Jesus. Yes. Amen. Um, my name is Mike. Michael. Michael Bucker. Um, it was about seven some odd years ago that I came to the Lord. Yes. That was in the back of the vestibule of Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. <laughs> Brother Dean was a very big part of that. Hey, but, and I'll tell you what, man, it has been a amazing roller coaster ride. Ever since. <laughs> and I do want to thank Brother Dean for the opportunity to come here and share with you. Uh, you really do. It was kind of funny how it all happened. Um, we had passed Brother Dean on the way to work. <laughs> and uh, we come up to a light and he pulls next to us and he's amazing. I said, well, I don't know your number. Well, he was in his work truck. Oh, that's a good story. I said, yeah, there it is. So that's, when, that's how we got to know. And, 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 and I say on Monday, on the way to work, I said to my wife, I said, you know what? If I'm going to his church to preach, he's going to sing for me. Because I have not heard Brother Dean sing in a long time. Yeah. That's what I said. Brother Dean, I said, would you sing for me? He said, yes, I will. Little did I know, Rick was going to be here. <laughs> well, I got another way. Yeah. yeah. That was amazing. Hey. So, uh, in a moment, I'm going to bring a message stepping out. A leap of faith. A leap of faith. Touch you, Lord. All right. We're going to look, begin in a moment. Second Timothy is where we're going to start. Right? Okay. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes the big old fingers on the turn the page. Take one minute to find it. Bless you. Bless you, Lord. I don't know if I can make a commercial plug here at the moment. <laughs> All right. I don't know if some of you do know that I I do have a, uh, a video series on Facebook. You check out every once in a while. It's called Talk with Prophecy. It comes. We do it on Wednesdays and we do it on, on Sundays. So come on, come on there and check it out sometime. I heard this story uh, last week. I read the story actually. This young boy who uh, <coughs> he's mistreated, let's say, by his family, by his mom and dad. Kind of mistreated. So he was in court in a custody. And the judge, in accordance to the law, was going to award him to the next, next of kin. Apparently it was an eight of his. And the boy said, no, no, no. He said, she, she hurts me even more. So the judge says, well, what about the grandparents? And the boy burst out screaming and crying and said, no, I can't even go to them. They're going to beat me even more. So the judge says, well, we have to figure something out. So he gave the boy a few moments. He said, come back in the chambers with me. He said, we'll, we'll discuss this. We'll figure out what's going on. And so a few minutes later, the boy came out. And the judge said, have you made your decision? And the boy said, yes, Your Honor, I have. And he said, well, who would you like to go with? He said, well, I would like for the Tennessee Falls football team to adopt me. And the judge says, well, why is that? He said, because they're not going to beat anybody. <laughs> Talk about a leap of faith. <laughs> So we're going to begin. Um, that Facebook is amazing. Place. So we're going to begin 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to start uh, verse. The focus is on verse 9. But I really believe, and this is where some people get in trouble, they like to take one verse out mm -hmm. and use that verse. Right. But really to get the meaning from it, we need to go sometimes a whole chapter before, sometimes a whole book before. Yeah. But in this instance, we're going to start in chapter, in chapter 1, verse 8, and we're just going to go through uh, verse number 9. 
And the Word of God says this. It says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Amen. Now, very often times, the Lord does call us to just sit and wait. Wait for his call. Just sit and wait. In Psalms, David says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, he shall strengthen thine heart. Yes. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. Now, for some of us, that is great. That is fantastic. That's exactly what we want to do. Yeah. <laughs> now, for some of us, though, it's kind of hard to do that because we just are so zealous and so overjoyed to be working for the Lord. We just want to go on and on and on and do what God wants us to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But there are times where we just need to sit around and wait. Amen. Now, a vast majority like to sit around and wait. It's exactly what they want to do. We do it because science would say it's because those of us who are like that are that like to sit back, out of the way, in the background, are because we're an introvert. Mm -hmm. Your Christian life is pretty good. You go to church on Sunday, you go on Wednesday, maybe sing in the choir. Yeah. But that's about it. That's about it. And other than that, you're just going to sit back and pray and hope and wait for his coming. But let's face it, that thought and that notion is because it's comfortable. Yeah. It's comfortable. But many don't like change at all. We don't like our feathers at all. Right. God forbid your boss tells you you got to be in about 10 minutes earlier or mm -hmm. 10 minutes later. After. We don't like that at all. Mm -hmm. Don't mess up my schedule. I'm in my comfort zone. Do not mess it up. Now, as I said, there's nothing wrong at all sitting still. For a season of time, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 says, everything has a purpose under heaven. Amen. Now, sometimes the Lord calls us to step out of our comfort zone mm. and actually be active in ministry. Wow. Yes. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that you have to come up here and preach okay. all the time. I had a I was at a church that we will say the name of the church. It's not too far from here, so if I say it, you might know who they are. We're not going to go that route. But I came up and I had sang a song. It was from, uh, oh, Lord, I can't remember the name, but I sang a song. And it talked about, tell me something that may, might change my life. You know, I'm sure you heard it on Caleb Radio. If you listen to it, you know, about the, 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 uh, the waitress and, you know, how. You see every Friday, and I'm sure you know the song. Well, anyway, I, I said to I said before I sang it that you know a lot of we're all called to a ministry. Yeah, every one of us is called. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the preacher there, when I was done, had said <coughs> that she disagrees. Mm -hmm. I probably just gave away where it's at, <laughs> but said I disagree because not everybody is going to come up here for this ministry. You can't come up here. I said, well, maybe we could. Maybe we could. But I wasn't speaking on all those lines. I'm talking the ministry of the church of Jesus. Amen. Jesus' is church. But that scares them. No. It scares a lot of us. Yeah. I think of Moses. I can imagine the day if it was modern times now, Moses. And, and, and Moses looked over and saw a burning bush. And he probably would have said something like, that's cool. Bush ain't burning. That's cool. Yeah. And then to hear the voice say, "Most go free my people." And I'm sure he said, "Me? I can't talk very well, let alone talk to the Pharaoh." But he did. God took him out of his comfort zone of where he was living, where he was staying, and he yeah. said, "Go." So we had to leave the comfort zone. So we're going to look at another passage of scripture. We're going to consider. Peter was a funny guy. I like Peter. I think Peter oftentimes a lot like myself. But 
We're going to look in the book of Matthew, chapter 14, and we're going to start at verse 22. We're just starting at 22 because I like it. Okay. Okay. And the word of God says, chapter 14, verse 22 says, And straight away Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of sea. Tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Yes. But straight away Jesus spake unto them and said, Be, be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Amen. Amen. Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter was come. And, Pete, and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water <coughs> to go to Jesus. Mm. Jesus called Peter to come to him. Now, I'm going to say the card. Was that just really anything special? I mean, it was. For Jesus to call him personally, he was very special. Yeah. But we all walk. You know, but for a moment, Peter was walking on the water. Yes. For just a moment. Because he kept his eyes on the prize. Yeah, man. He had to take a step of faith. Yes, man. man. How did the boat stay on that board? Yeah. Hey, man. Next step, and I'm sure he took a few moments just like the rest of us to say, really, should I really step out of here in the water? I've seen people sink. But he did. He took that step out. Yes. And he focused on Christ. Yes. And he was standing on the water. Then he took his focus away. Yes, mm -hmm. he did. No doubt there was little lives being told. Amen. Amen. And as he took his went to take a Amen. step, and those lies come, he sunk. Mm -hmm. He sunk. Now, did Christ call him to Peter just to be a cheerleader for him? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I mean, there's no bigger cheerleader than Christ for us. You know. But he was letting them know that with me, you can do all things. That's right. Amen. Amen. Me, you can do it. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hey. We kind of pray about it, probably just as Peter did. And then we go. As long as we're keeping our eyes on him, as Paul says in Philippians, now this is the, the new Yankee edition, according to Michael. Amen. He says, press toward the mark of the prize, the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. And we too will walk on the same water. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe not so much walking on the water. I've never seen anybody since ever walking on the water. We were at Melton Hill Lake a few weeks ago, a few months ago, and I tried it. And, I, and it doesn't work. And, and they tried it on Mythbusters. And they tried all kinds of ways on Mythbusters, and it doesn't work. But let's consider this. Without a show of hands, just think about this for a moment. And uh, Dean, you don't count because I know this is probably you. Okay. Now, you're at work and the boss calls a meeting. About 150 of them in the office. And maybe a few close work mates know that you're a Christian, but your boss has no idea. So, anyway, the boss calls you in and says, but he says, before I do, he goes, call Mark and he say, could you please just pray for us because I got this bad news? That's why I said you don't count because I know you'll do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and he say, me? I'm not a really good speaker. Why is he picking on me? So you've already taken your step of faith, taken your step out of your comfort zone in the boat once already. When he called you out of the world to be his. Mm -hmm. And you're standing on the water because things are great. And you think, okay, maybe I can do this. So you start walking towards Christ. 
And as you're walking, take a step, take another step, and the enemy comes up behind you. Mm -hmm. So remember, you can't talk. Mm -hmm. You can't speak in front of people. You're afraid to talk in front of people. You can't do this. Hey. And you start to say, start to say, and you start looking back at your comfort zone and behind the crowd. But then Christ walks down and picks you up. Hey. Yeah, hey, man. Oh, hey, man. Hey. Yeah. And he says, come. And he picks you up, and he brings you to safety. Mm -hmm. And with Christ, you pray the best prayer you've prayed your entire life. Amen. And everybody is all at ease with the story that's about to come. Amen. Because he took the step of faith. Amen. Step of faith. Now how about how about you having issues with your finances? Mm -hmm. How about you you work hard every day to provide for your family. You work your fingers to the bone. Might get up. I'm going to chase it right here for a moment. Whoever it was that said hard work will never hurt you, I really would like a reason with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. <laughs> but anyway, so you work hard, you provide for your family, work every day, come home sweaty, dirty, tired, whatever. But your paycheck is just not coming in. And, you know, you go to church. You've already took your state, your step out of your comfort zone of your boat. You became a Christian and you go to church, and, you know, and, and worldly standards, you're a pretty good guy. Maybe when you at church you throw whatever you got left, two or three dollars in the plate. But your pay is just not paying. You got bills, you've got teenage kids that every time they come home from school, they need more money for this and more money for that. I'm gonna send my to, to, to the Christmas school time. Parochial school. Probably be cheaper, to be honest with you. But it's just not me. And so I said, You're already stepped out. But God says to you, Listen, I'm tired. Put your tithe in there. He says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. If I will not open the door, and prove now, wherewith said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there shall be room enough for you not to say, not guide for you. So you decide, yeah, I think I'm going to make that time. So you come already to church the next week and you've got your pockets full ready to, for, your, for your tithe and you're about to step out or the plate is coming your way and you have How are you going to go buy milk for your kids? How are you going to make your car, your car payment? How are you going to make your mortgage payment? You can't do this. And Christ reaches down. And you start to sink. And Christ yeah. reaches down and picks you up and says, Come on. And he helps you go put that money in that plate there for you. And now your check is lasting an entire week yeah. instead of two days. Right. Because you took that step. You took that step. Yeah. Consider this. Say, Brother Dean, one Sunday makes the announcement that the church is sponsoring a missions trip. Sponsoring a missions trip to some nation in Africa somewhere. But you've never left home. You've never left Harry, let alone the country. Now, you're faithful. You give to missions. You've stepped out of your comfort zone of the boat when Jesus called you out of the world. Probably to some mocking, some teasing. You know, but you did it. And you've been walking pretty well. Here's your eyes on the Lord, and you're standing on water with the Lord. <clears throat> and you think, you know what? I'm going to take that step, that step of faith, and I'm going to go. So you start. And you know, things are pretty good. And as you're focusing on the Lord, you're making it. You're walking across the water. You're making it. Things are falling into place. Got your plane tickets already. You got all your shots up to date. Whatever you got to do to go on a mission trip. It's all falling into place. And you're walking and you're focused. Mm. And all of a sudden, the enemy comes to you. And the enemy says, I'm going to take care of your food. Yeah. What about your job? Mm. Somebody can take your job if you leave. What about the church? Who's going to take care of the church while you're gone? Maybe. Listen. And you start to sink. Your 
eyes come off the Lord and you start thinking of all the other stuff and you start to sink. Mm. And once again, the Lord reaches down and he picks you up and you find yourself witnessing to yeah. folks in a foreign country, even in their language, mm. about Jesus Christ. Maybe even bringing folks to Christ. Hey. All because he picked you up and he went on that trip with you. He took right. you there himself and yeah. placed you there. Right. Now, <clears throat> what about the story of the Good Samaritan mm -hmm. in, in, in Luke's gospel? Mm -hmm. And maybe you find yourself this way, all right? We know the story of the Good Samaritan. We know how he came about. But in chapter 31 of Luke, and I'm sorry, in chapter 10, verse 31, uh, the gospel of Luke, yeah. it says, and by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Yeah. Are you that priest? Now I'm not talking about a priest in a robe wearing Catholic kind of a way. But are you one of those ones that yeah. maybe to see the sick or injured fellow on the street and cross over and say, yeah, somebody else. But do you remember how I said a little bit earlier? We are all called to ministry. Amen. And like I said, some of us are called to preach, some of us are called to teach, some of us are called to do other things. But at this very moment, you're being called to this person. So once again, you've taken your step, and you're focusing on the Lord, and you're standing and walking on water. But you see the sick person. And now, the enemy tells you, he brings up all these signs to you. And says, well, you get what he got. Back then, they were all afraid of leprosy. So you're going to get what he got. Yeah. I think now they're afraid of HIV. I think it is now. I think it's our modern leprosy. But someone with a disease like that, and they call for you to help, will you walk the other side of the street? Mm -hmm. Or would you take that step to walk a little bit further in faith and put your hand on them and pray Maybe. for that person? Would you pick them up, bring them to your house, and feed them and clothe them? Take that step. But again, Satan says, you can't do that. You're going to get sick. Your whole family's going to get sick. you got no food in your house. you got nothing for anybody. You've got your socks. What are you going to put on? Yeah. So you start to sing. And again, the Lord reaches down, pulls you up, Lord. and you just said something, just like in that work, in, in the lyrics of, of that Song on the sidewalk, walk prophets that I said just a moment ago, yeah. where David Fry says, Tell something that might save my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, by stepping out in faith, and instead of crossing, you could have been a blessing to that little fellow. You could have done something for him, no matter the ailment or the situation. Now, listen, a leap of, a leap of faith can come in many, many, many forms. It doesn't have to be that of a physical power. It can be a sudden illness for yourself or a loved one. An injury of some type. Now, you've seen the Lord heal all kinds of people. And for me, going at Pleasant Grove, I've seen a lot of healing at Pleasant Grove. Right, right. We saw a lot of healing, Lord. And I'm sure you've seen some too. But the enemy says to you, You're not worthy for healing. You're not worthy for that blessing for your family. And so while you were still looking at Christ, and you're saying, you know, I can pray, and the Lord will help this person. Yeah. I pray for that person. So your walk is okay at this point. Your walk is great. But the enemy lies to you and says, you're not worthy. Because you can't do that. He says, the Lord don't hear you. Why are you even trying? Uh, and then you start to sing. Mm -hmm. And the Lord reaches down. At this point, not only does he save you, but he heals your loved one at the same time. Yeah. He says just to show off is what he's doing. <laughs> but he reaches down and he picks him up and he heals you, yeah. heals your faith, and he heals the person that you're with. Yeah. 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 All because you took that step. Yeah. Now, your call may be to minister to fellow church members. Just like we said, who's sick. May not even be sick physically. What about if their faith is weak? What about if you're having a conversation with a church member 
And they say, you know, Michael, I just don't know anymore. I've been praying and praying and praying for a job, and I just haven't got it. Maybe the Lord just doesn't hear me. Now, to me, that's not really his problem. To me, what that is is the Lord telling me, you've got to step out of your comfort zone. You've got to go minister to the person. Step out of your boat, step on the water, and come home. But the enemy will come by. And the enemy will say to you, you don't know enough scripture. You ever heard that to yourself? Amen. You ever heard that? As clear as day, I've heard that before. Amen. You don't know enough of Scripture. He's told me before, when I was starting this coffee with Christ thing that I was doing, I had heard it. He said, he said, you only became a Christian when you were 30-something years old. How are you going to do this whole thing in bringing the gospel to people on Facebook, no less? All over the world, people are seeing. How are you going to do that? You don't know the Scriptures. Because, see, I see all the people have them memorized. I can't memorize. I couldn't memorize, memorize multiplication facts, let alone. And what the Bible says, he's telling me, you can't memorize those. You're going to be no good. If somebody is having trouble in their faith, you'll be no good. So again, we start to sing. We start to sing. And you know, you know why Jesus reached down to break Peter up out of there? Because no doubt, Peter said, Lord, save me. What did he do? Saved him. Is Peter any different than you and I? He's just a man like the rest of us. Nothing special. He's a fisherman. I wish I could spend my whole day fishing and get paid for it, maybe, you know. But he's no different than you and I. And if the Lord had reached down and saved him in his moment of sinking, his moment of Faith wavering? Why won't he do it to us? Why can't he do it to us? We trust God with our eternal residence. Yeah. We trust him in that. We know when we took that step out of the boat and we said, Jesus, yes, come into my heart. You are my Lord and Savior. We trusted him with our eternity. Yeah. Why can't we trust him and take that step out of faith for the little thing? Hey. Hey, See, because I think a lot of us as Christians, I think, are looking for what I call the big ah uh, moments. The big ah uh, miracle. And we seem to miss the little tiny ones. Right. We seem to miss the little times that he answers our prayers. Yeah. We seem to think that when, when we go to a funeral, that that's an unanswered prayer that that person, I didn't know that person. Yes, he did. He's in the streets of gold right now, if he was a Christian. Amen. He's walking the streets of gold. To me, that's him. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But we won't trust him. We won't trust them in the situation of going on a mission trip, giving a little extra of our time. <clears throat> we won't trust them to sustain us from that. We won't trust that if someone calls us from a hospital and says, listen, will you come pray with me? We don't really trust that God, we got no gas in our tank. We don't really kind of trust that God will get us there. Yes. He'll put all the gas we need in that car. Yes. Yes. We don't seem to seem to trust that. So, what we're trying to say, take a little step out. Take a step in faith. So now that's good for us Christians. But there's a whole other group that I'm going to talk to you about. Now, I don't know if anybody here is in the same situation I'm going to speak about for a moment, but I see we are on Facebook. And I'm hoping everybody, if you're with a Coffee with Christ person and you're watching us, thank you for watching. But I'm going to talk to you folks for a minute. How's your life going? Do you feel empty? Do you feel the need for something more and more and more? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, see, a lot of times I find when I'm talking with folks, and I kind of use the word lost people, they kind of take that as, as a mean kind of a word. And I've heard a few folks say, I'm not lost, I know exactly where I'm at. Well, yeah, you are. But it doesn't really fit you to say that we're thinking you're an evil person in the sense of the worldly word, you're an evil person. You could be a pretty decent person. You know. Lost in the sense that you just haven't come out in the light. Right. You have not. Now, have you tried to do things on your own and it keeps failing for you? We're talking to these people here, right? And you keep failing. Yeah. 
doesn't seem to work. <coughs> you know, you volunteer, you help the poor, <laughs> feed the hungry. Like a friend of mine once said, and he truly believes this, and I, I pray for him all the time, and I pray that he just comes out of this, this mindset. But he believed, see, I used to be a volunteer first aid here up in New Jersey, and I was a volunteer fireman. I did it for a good portion of my life. And he was as well, him and I worked together on a lot of things together. And he truly believes that because that we have done that for all those years, that we're okay for the afterlife, as he calls it. Well, if we rely just on that, we will have an afterlife. Yes. Just not the afterlife that any of us want. I don't want to go there. You know. I'm glad that I was able to take that piece of faith. Amen. And I'm calling to those who are seeing us, those who are here, who may be lost, who may be searching for that one thing. And try Jesus. Amen. Try Jesus Christ. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy burdened. I will give you rest. Hey. He didn't say just for Jim or just for Sal. Yeah. He didn't just say just for Joe or here. He said all. Oh, and if you find that you're just not making it, everything you do fails, you just need something else and you're searching and searching and searching and you cannot find it, trust in Jesus. Yeah. Any one of us will be happy to help. Any one of us will be happy to pray. We all need to take that step of faith Amen. and rely on the Spirit for us to help those that we need to bring. Yeah. Harry Dean told me that you've been talking about it's coming soon. We're there. I think we're there too. I, I've been saying it for a long time. <laughs> there are folks that will disagree with us and oh, it's a long way. Well, they've been saying that since the beginning of time. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's coming to the end of time now. Yeah. And we need to step out. <clears throat> And we need to come out of our comfort zone of our boat, just as Peter did. And when we do, you can find yourself free in God's people, just as Moses did. And walking on water, yeah. just as Peter did. And just as Peter, being a rock upon which the church should go. Yeah. If we take that step of faith. Mm -hmm. Now I ask you, is there anything on your heart that you hear the Lord calling you to? Anything at all. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be the scenarios that we talked about. <coughs> it could be anything in your life that you need to take that little leap of faith. And you need to focus. And you need to walk on that water with the Lord. And get that taken care of for yourself. Now I don't know if, if this is time for us to open here or not. And I should have said, listen, I always have one rule, that if you have something that, you know, you need to settle with the Lord, don't think you're interrupting me. Sure. Let, you know, come and do it. But I tell you now, just think for a moment. What has the Lord called you to do? Has he called you to do something that you're finding yourself saying? Because you're not saying it. The enemy is saying you can't do that. If there's something that you need to come up with and say, the Lord, help me. Take this burden from me. Help me do what I gotta do. Come on and do it. Settle it now. Because I guarantee you, you will open the gates of heaven for a blessing you cannot control. Amen. Come on and do it. Thank you, Thank you. Brother Terry. Or have a time to respond to the invitation. Thank you, dear brother. Thank you for the invitation. We've uh, had a great message tonight. Stepping out in faith. Stepping out in faith. It takes a lot of faith to do some things. It takes a little faith to do most of them. Jesus said, if you have a faith of the grain, the size of a grain of a mustard seed, Move mountains. Amen. What are the mountains in your life tonight? What are the things that are, are uh, the obstacles that, that are in your way from doing what God has called you to do? 
What is it? I guarantee you it's not as big as you think it is. That's that whisper, that, that whisper from the devil. You can't get over that. You can't get around that. That's too big. No way can you uh, scale that mountain for the glory that's at the top. No way you can do that. And can I tell you something? Can I give you just a little word of truth tonight? You can't. You hear me? You can't. I can't. Who can't? On my own. But I love that verse, one of my favorite in all of Scripture. Uh, Brother Michael quoted it earlier. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Yeah. Mm, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How much can I do? All. Oh. Oh. You know what all means in the Greek? All. Oh. You know what all means in the Hebrew? All. Oh. Oh. Amen. You know what all means in Swahili? Oh, amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So now, what is it tonight? What is it that is in your life that you don't think can be overcome? That's hindering you from doing what God has called you to do. To stopping you from, from, from fulfilling the purpose that God has just for you. <coughs> you know, that you have already received every spiritual blessing necessary for you to fulfill the purpose God made you for. You've already got it all. Ephesians chapter 1. Before the foundation of the world, before he said, let there be anything, he looked ahead in the quarters of time and he said, I'm going to give you everything that you need to fulfill the purpose that I have created you for. And no one else can do it like you. No one. What is it tonight? What has been placed in front of you that you need to step out in faith and trust Christ Jesus today to overcome? <coughs> Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and we praise you. We praise you for this word that you have sent to us tonight through this, your servant. We praise you for that, Father. We praise you for every one that is here tonight. God, there are those that are here that uh, are just struggling. They're your children, and they, they're, they're, they, they're, they're struggling tonight. Maybe they've fallen uh, into some uh, uh, sin. Maybe they're just uh, uh, confused. Maybe they're just in some darkness, and they, they just need a light to see the way out. You know, you did call Moses, and Moses uh, uh, argued with you. He said, I can't speak clearly. I can't do this thing you asked me to do. So what you did, God, was what you always do. You sent someone Amen. to help him. You always use people. All throughout scripture, you gave him Aaron to help him speak. To support him and to, to pray for him and to help him. And that's what we want to do. We want to be someone <coughs> Aaron tonight, God. We want to help you if you're here. We want to help you through this thing you're going through, whatever it is. Maybe you're here and you, you, you've just never trusted in Jesus. You've never come to the place in your life where you realize that you're a sinner and you need a Savior and your only help and your only hope is Jesus Christ. I want you to know that tonight is your night. No better time than right now to call upon the name of the Lord and let him save you. And we're going to sing a song. When we begin to sing, if God is speaking to your heart, if God the Holy Spirit is, is, is drawing you to himself, you step out and just come on forward.
Don't even wait for the chorus. Just come on out as they begin to sing. In Jesus' name and for his sake, we ask and pray these things. Won't you stand with us? Amen.
movie night next Saturday night at six o'clock. This 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 coming Saturday. This the eleventh. One and one. All right. Winter Jam. Winter Jam is November the second. February second. February the second. <laughs> We're in November. Amen. Thank you, Mary Jo. Amen. January, February the second. February second. Groundhog. Groundhog, it is, isn't it? February second in Nashville, Tennessee. We want to take the youth and be a part of that. Uh, it'll be kind of a one-day trip, long trip, I guess. Uh, but it'll be fun. We'll have a good time. All right. And so you be praying about that. Be praying about participating in that. And uh, we want to we want to go and just have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Winter Jam. February the 2nd, 2018. Amen. Be there or be square. <laughs> Amen. All right. Everybody happy, happy, happy? Amen. Amen. Lift your hands for the blessing. I'm going to give you a double dose today. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you all the days of your life. May you know the joy of his salvation, the peace in his resurrection, and the hope of his soon coming. And may you step out in faith yes. and do that which he has called you to do in Jesus' name. And for his sake we ask and pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much.